Welcome to Heroes of Education with Class Act Credit Union. Today we are here with Miss Jackie Hongher at Phoenix School of Discovery and we're going to learn a little bit more about how she inspires the future of America. This is, I guess you would say, my third profession. Um, initially, I was doing uh, IT stuff. Uh, oh, okay. I did my undergrad in management information systems, so I tried that for a couple of years. Kind of got a little boring, and then um, I don't think the office space is exactly for me, and so I just got back into school. After that, I became an animal, uh, certified animal rehab therapist, that's what they call it, and uh, I went to University of Tennessee over their College of Veterinary Medicine and received the certification that way. Uh, worked for about six or seven years and um, didn't think it would be that big of a stretch to come to school in education. I thought, okay, let's try this out. We'll see how it goes. I honestly, I think teaching was not the first profession, I hate to say that, um, in my mind at all. Um, because when I was little, actually, my mother would tell me, you need to have more patience because maybe you'll be a teacher. And I remember very well, and I told her, I'll never be a teacher. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I have swallowed my words. But, um, you know, it was something that a friend of mine had mentioned, and I thought, no, 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 it's definitely not for me. And then kind of just investigated a little bit more and thought, all right you know what, this could be, and, it, and I, I like it because even as a physical, thera um, physical therapist for animals, you're still training and kind of teaching um, in, the sa in, in, in that way, and so I thought, let's just try this out and see how it works, and if they like me and if I like teaching, great. If otherwise, then we'll, we'll, we'll look into something else. Obviously, this is not my purpose for <laughs> Sure. I really like our students. Uh, they're they're really quirky. They're awesome. Um, and there there was a but when I moved here from uh, in 2005, uh, I used to originally live in Washington D.C. area. Okay. And um, there was a place, a music place called Ear Ecstasy, and I think it's still here. It's just I, I don't know. Um, yeah. But they had a I don't know if you call it a slogan. Anyways, there was a sticker that I saw, and it said "Keep Louisville Weird." And right. I love that uh, that slogan, that motto, whatever, and I think that really applies to our students here, and I, it's great because I love I love I love that they're weird, um, you know, because they're not boring. They're not, mm -hmm. they're wonderful. They um, they just have a lot. They have a lot on their plate, but um, it's fun. It's fun to get to know them and you know kind of work with them. So. You know, it's one of those things where you just have to tap into their interests. Um, like I had a couple of students working on the 3D printer, um, and it's like I, I want them to come and ask me. You know, me going over to them, it's not putting as much ownership and agency into what they're choosing and how they're going about their high school education. Mm -hmm. um, so, right before you came, actually, one of the students came up to ask me about the 3D printer. I was wondering why it wasn't working yet, and so I was like, well, if you're wondering and you want, are a problem solver, you might want to help me solve this problem. Um, <laughs> because, yeah, we haven't been able to get it. Uh, it's something, since we moved schools, um, we've reinstalled it on our own, um, so it's, it's, a, it's, it's got a little something we've got to, I don't know what it is, we've got to work it out somehow, so, yeah. Oh, okay. But, um, they gravitated to it, and I was really happy about that, so. That's that's pretty cool technology. I yeah. can only imagine. I, yeah. I certainly couldn't understand it. <laughs> I don't either. That's why they're working on. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so. them do it. yeah. Uh, we not that we have very different students. We just have a collective of students that have come from many different places. We are a citywide school, and so anywhere in the city um, of Louisville, which is huge <laughs> these days, uh, in the metro, uh, you can come to the school. Our kids are like, um, it's a movie called Breakfast Club. They're yeah, like, I it's feel classic. Like yes, it is a classic, <laughs> yeah. I, um, you know, a lot of our teachers actually feel this way, is that that's what our students are kind of like. They're just everywhere. They're off the wall. They're yeah. very different from one another. Um, you know, and that's, I think for our school, we like to celebrate diversity. Um, sure. And how everyone's a little different in, in, in just, in, in quirky in different ways. And so, um, in addition, because our students have these demanding needs, we are, um, we are trying out something new. We're one of the pilots, one of the two pilot schools in JCPS that is trying this out, which is called summitlearning.org. Um, and it's a, it's a learning platform 
so that students have a little bit more again agency control of what they're learning when they're learning it and um, how they're going about learning it and it acts a little bit it's a combination of a uh, flipped classroom and just kind of traditional teaching because um, the students are doing a lot of the work a lot of the project work in class and then they're studying the topics and taking tests on their own time so um, okay. now we would have to approve let, let's say they want to take a test and then we, but we would have to approve the tests and say all right you're ready to take a test then let's go ahead to the testing center and then you can go ahead and, uh, but they have uh, they can they can test as many times as they want to and retest over and over again however what we do ask them is the fact that they show us what they did differently Hmm. Um, uh, we watched. I watched a video, an extra video, or I went to talk to my science teacher, or um, I took notes on some vocabulary, and I didn't do that before, um, and then now, so now I'm ready again, you know. And so it's it's that process of iteration, reiteration, and and um, trying something, and then you know practicing it and pr adding more strategies and stuff like that, so that uh, we feel that our students seem to be lacking. Um, and trying trying something before they even think that they're going to fail it, you mm. know? and doing it again and then saying all right well it's kind of like a game well all right you didn't pass this level all right then let's go back and redo this and see if you can get better or game our system or game something somehow and then if you can get better at it great and we'll move along you know having a whole school take that m initiative and movement and being new all together yeah it's, it's scary but at the same time we're all we can all relate yeah it's nice. like unifying yeah yeah right way. so we have, we're like this whole collective of blind mice together, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're all on the journey together yeah yeah, yeah exactly That's really cool. so um and you know we tell the students you're gonna help make it better next year so you tell us mm. What do you like? What do you not like about it? What can we change? How would, would it work better for you? You know, um, again, because a lot of our students, and I think as, as a human species, we don't like change, right? Sure. And so, <laughs> it's difficult. Um, right. And, you know, some of our students were excelling in the traditional aspect, mm. or excuse me, in the, in the way we were teaching before, they were really nervous about trying something new and saying, oh, gosh, am I going to be just as good at this you mm -hmm. know? um and that's what we say it's one of those things summit's a really good platform where it's about the feedback process the process itself and not the end you know okay um you you're doing it this way so they send it and then they sent they submit it for feedback for instance um in terms of the process then they um, i'll look it over all right well some things are a little off send it back do it this way they try something a little here We'll come back and do it again if there's something else lost so that again that iteration process over and over that they know that they can go back and not just do it once and if it wasn't perfect the first time they can still go back it's not a failure right which is life is like that exactly. i think yeah right right exactly you know so um and life is a lot like a game so you're mm. just trying to figure out where you can level up <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So, um, and uh, or if you're better at something and, and if you're not mm. and if it's that important to you then you're going to practice it over and over again so then you can level up <laughs> right yeah. yeah i'm usually just trying to save extra lives for later when <laughs> yeah, there you go yeah I phone a friend <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <That's helpful. laughs> right something yeah so um but that's you know for them that's how they can also study they can ask peers, they can ask teachers, all kinds of stuff. But once you test in terms of, you know, showing how well you individually perform, that's all you. you know? Okay. And just like the game or a game, um, that's all you. Uh, you can have collaborations in every which way, but once you're kind of um, exhibiting your performance of and the, how well you're doing something, then that's individualized. Okay. So, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, I was once told by um, a mentor that two things that make someone remember you or remember the material is humor or fear. Okay. So um, I'll try to you know keep things kind of real and just 100% with the students. And if we have some kind of some time to joke and humor, that's great. Um, I also 
have a little moment where in you know it's science so it's like everything out there can be scary um, and so I introduce it to the students I have a thing at the end of the week called mystery diagnosis and it's inspired by actually an Instagram account that I follow and she's a pathologist assistant and um, we go over and we'll look at certain things you know diseases conditions um, how, how injuries happen and then they get to guess of how could this happen you know, just because hmm. just because it's, uh, how should I say, not pretty doesn't mean it's not out there in the world, right? Sure. And so I think that they should definitely be able to see this in a more controlled environment. So when, if ever it happens anywhere out there, they're kind of somewhat prepared, not prepared, but aware of what's going on and not panicking. Um, I also really think experience is really important. Um, and not just about the academics. And so we do a lot of things where it's an experience, like dissection, for instance. Um, you know, I am I'm a big animal advocate, but at the same time, I know in my education that was what I remember the most. You know, mm. is uh, doing a dissection in class. Um, if you were even talking about class, because otherwise I would remember, you know, going to homecoming or going to a football game, whatnot. Yeah, a lot there's of a lot it more to it. It's not necessarily in the classroom. You know, so I think experience is a huge thing for the students. So we do take. Uh, a good amount. I mean, I like to take more field trips, of course, but um, logistically, it, it, it gets a little more difficult too if you're doing it so often. Um, we sure. also take the students to a DC service learning trip, and um, right before spring break, and so they get to go and they do service learning, which is great for their transcript. You know, doing volunteer work, and it's always really nice to be able to say, "I went to volunteer in DC." I paid more money to go and help people. You know, it's it's just it's one of those things, and uh. the students understand it, um, and they they feel better for it. You know, it's just not like we're just taking a trip. And um, sometimes when they're asking for some donations, some of the family members or friends they'll say, because it's a service learning trip, I'll definitely support you. Mm. You know, because you're doing good for others and you're paying it forward. Um, but in at the same time, we also do. Half of the trip is a service learning and the other half is just being able to explore and see. Um, because I have students that have never even flown in a plane. And it's that experience uh, alone. Or sure. getting on the metro in DC alone, just that, you know. And they get so excited just for that, you know, sometimes where I'll be like, you want to go see the uh, Lincoln Memorial? Okay, hold on, I'm tired. <laughs> wait for a moment, you know. Yeah. But they get really excited just like get on a plane just ha having a new experience you know and being able to give them something like that goes a lifetime like don't yeah. remember that kind of stuff you know so yeah, yeah like you talked about how it's a lot of logistical work i'm sure that's i can only imagine taking a group of students on an airplane like oh yes that sounds very stressful but <laughs> the impact that it ha must have on them is we have got to be exponential time. so we have amazing <laughs> time but yeah it's definitely it's a growing experience for all of us um yeah, we. Uh, this is our third year going to DC okay. with the students, and so we're getting a lot better. Um, eventually, we would love to do like international trips. You know, I, I'm from Thailand, uh -huh. so I would love to take the students to Thailand. Yeah, you probably know where to bring them. I already yeah. have the trip planned out. <laughs> okay. We just have to get funding. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's yeah. the most difficult part. Um, yeah, and it, now that would be a trip of a lifetime. Not that DC isn't, you know, but sure. going across. To the other side of the world, which it really is, is 12 hours um, in terms of time zone yeah. of a difference. And being able to see, you know, just something different and uh, just not what's outside in Louisville and whatnot, but something like that. I just, I'd love for them to do that. Yeah. And, uh, I, I kind of want to go. Do you need chaperones? Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> okay. I thought we would. We need chaperones, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just things like that. I think experiences are the way to go when it comes to learning um, and it doesn't have to be the same experience not everyone's going to have to go through the same experience you know mm. you go through the experience and you're not going to pick up the same stuff from the experience either you're going to see you're going to learn something different because somebody else was had an interest in this part or what you know whatever it is and so yeah, that's why i think experiences are really good because it it takes the learning and then they they take and they and they, they kind of like own it hmm. oh that's part i want to learn about it okay well this part of the experience is a little boring but there's so many yeah. thoughts, you know, or variables in terms of experiential learning. Having fun is contagious.
Mm. And so if you as the teacher is having, uh, is having fun, attitude is everything, right? So if you're having fun, then it just kind of pours out to the students and maybe they're having a bad day, you know? You mm. don't know what they're having and what they're going through and what happened last night. Um, but if you are kind of like trying for them and then knowing that they know that you care and want to know what's going on. Like I remember having a student ask me, tell me, the best question any teacher, anyone can ask me is, are you okay? How are you? You know, one of those questions because we can say, and mean it, and mean it. You know, we can say, how are you? All the sure, time. yeah. Uh, it's like a salutation <laughs> greeting, yeah. but uh, meaning it and having the time to like listen to them mm -hmm. and if they want, if they want to say something, um, I think it's really important. You know, um, being genuine and having a good time are probably the best uh, advice I was given. Um, and the advice I would like to also, um, you know, again, just kind of put out there because I think that I try, I really try, I really try to make it, I'm, I'm also only human and I have my bad days too, and so <laughs> I'll even tell my students, look, I'm a little grumpy today, Yeah. I, I might even be hangry, um, you know, I can get breakfast or whatever, so just bear with me, um, you even know, that is... we'll go through it together. You know, again, yeah, because yeah, uh, letting them know that I'm a human too, because you know, going through it, I remember being as a student, my teachers weren't really humans. I don't know what mm. they were, <laughs> but they weren't like, like me. The peanuts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were just other beings elsewhere, right? Yeah. But if you can just get, like, if you can relate to a student, you know, then they will open up more. They'll be more trusting of for of you and being able to. Then you'll finally be able to help them. Because if they don't trust you and they don't want to talk to you, then there's they're not going to do they're not going to want to do the work, right? Um, but if once they build up that relationship, it's either they're doing it for you, they're doing it for them, they're doing it because they feel like they should be doing something like this because you've given them kind of a that sense of purpose of why it's happening, you know, or, or um, giving them the relevancy of here's what it is in mm. your life and how you see it, how how that can affect you. I think exposure is something that would be nice. Um, the what you all have talked about it with your program, I had no, I didn't realize that you all do that, um, and I okay, don't even yeah. know if you all have field trips to those magnet schools, or you know, I know you all have like a branch uh. in Southern. I don't know if you have um, like are my students could they go and could they maybe have a day trip and learn kind of um, in a nutshell, of course, what the other students are learning for a year, um, or you know, just something to kind of again expose them to what's out there. Um, we cool tend idea. to live in our little bubble, um, mm -hmm. and I, and I, and nothing at all bad to say about Louisville, but there's more of a bubble in Louisville. Mm -hmm. um, and just because you know, meeting my students, so oh, I've, I've never been outside Louisville, or I've never been on a plane, or you know, this and that, wow. and. Um, from where I came from in DC, it was it's a very diverse area, and so sure, yeah. you know, and they're like, oh, I've done that, oh, I've done this, you know. Then so, everyone's been somewhere. Yeah, something somewhere, which is nice, but and it's a different mm. conversation you can have, but it, just to be able to expose them, open their eyes, um, having them be able to see things, is is just so impactful, you know. Maybe not yeah. experience, but be able just just see it all together, know that it's out there. Um, and I think that would be a really good idea um, if there was a way that, I don't know if you all do anything like this, but um, if there was a partnership where class staff and the students, maybe, uh, you know, Phoenix students, if that would be great too, to do any um, type of partnership in service learning. Okay. You know, um, I know uh, some, you might have like give a day or something like that, but, yeah. but you yeah. can partner up with your with class act and then they have a, that there's a student and a mentor and then we do service learning together or, or you know whatnot or if there was like a like a blood drive we would put organize something together like that um, I think it would it'd be good just to be able to have them interact outside of school outside of their friends um, with adults the community you know right. that's what we were just talking about earlier is the fact that our students um, seem like their their cognitive skills and their social skills uh, need to get a little stronger for some of our students um, and and I think things like that without them realizing they're actually doing it is very helpful
Yeah, yeah, and I think that we could use that as well, just as a business, you can get in your little world of the work that you do, and so yeah, I think yeah. that would be really cool. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be fun to branch out, and then, you know, again, just to be able to interact with somebody different, you know, a student, and like a junior, or anybody, you know, hanging out with you, maybe building yeah. a house, or again, you know, whatever, handing out snacks after a blood donation and whatnot, um, it would just be a nice way to bond, too. Yeah. yeah, make it bigger than school, bigger than work, but about right. what's actually going on around us. Right. That's cool. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, thank Jackie. You. I really appreciate it. It's great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Absolutely. All right.